Go on Sputnik. Well today it's a glorious afternoon. Just above Ramsey, above the gooseneck. Park the car on the Hibernia Road. Then Penny and I are going off to explore a little farm called Park Moor. And um, I've picked today because it's not too windy and um, not too misty. And I took some photographs up here from the book. It was just on the snow line. But not today. So we'll have a good poke around and a bit of a chat about it. It's on the uh, North Brule. Yeah, North Brule Mountain. Called the North or the West Slope. Advertised a few times for sale over the years. About 50 or 75 acres. It was owned for many years by a butcher family in Ramsey called Gellings. And the view, stupendous. Long time since we've been out on her own, usually with Carla, but she's busy the next few weeks. So I didn't want to waste the weather. Because it'll soon be winter time. Soon be winter time. I'm not sure whether it is privately owned these days or government owned. This has been sold a few times over the years. I had a little summer house on it as well, which is pebble dashed. And that was knocked down around by the time the Blue Reservoir was built, I think. So it's not a bad trek up to it. To be fair. It's had a variety of owners over the years. The last one I could find out was Mr. Walter Jackson. He's a big sheep farm on North Brule. He also owned Park Llewellyn. It's the other side of this hillside. It's also owned by the Gellings, the butchers I've told you about. And also by the um, who else owned it? Oh, Goldie Torbman. He owned as well. I've got some figures I'll give you when I get stopped. It's supposed to also have a horse mill. So there's a few things to check out, I think. As they say. And today I'm in my shorts and sandals. It's a bit of a rarity for me. Breezy though, still breezy. So we came up the easy way. I was going to park on the mountain road, but God, the traffic and the speed. And go your car. So I looked at Hibernia was the safest road. What have you seen, Pen? Come on. 
Some mighty ditch has been dug up here to get the water away. So we're run down the road, I guess. It's also renowned for its blaberries up here, apparently. And you can just see some little bushes here now that produce a variety of currants. Painful things to pick up, I've tried myself. Much bigger than the pinhead. Thousands to make a pie, but apparently they're very tasty. There's two ladies up to be in the 30s who used to specialise in blueberry pies. You park them down the roadside, people stop and pay and help themselves. And here we are. Let's see what we can find now, eh? In front of this old little foxglove is the old summer house. And um, it was pebble dashed. So I think the Gellings built it as a summer residence. It's got to be in the summertime when they moved into Ramsey. Obviously I'm up here today and it's gorgeous. Give you some idea where we are, that little tower down the bottom there, right over the horizon it's called, but tower. So we're a bit above the gooseneck. So it's just on the snow line up here. And when it was farmed they were advertising it as a um, dairy farm, for goodness sake. The main buildings are up above the uh, old summer house and we'll go up there now and check them out, see what we can find and see if we get any ideas of how things worked up here. That's an interesting, interesting bit of old uh, machinery, a single furrow horse plough. Huh. So obviously they must have done some arable work up here to have this still lying around, one or two horses. You'd plough down the field always one way, one furrow. And the thing was, if you did an acre a day in the winter time, you're considered a good ploughman. Nowadays, they do an acre in a few minutes. Everything was manual. I've used one of these to take the furrows out from the hedge of my father. I can assure you, it's hard work. They'd have a wheel on somewhere so they could go back up the field empty. That would be to adjust the depth, or maybe some other parts, different holes for different different types of ground, lay ground or stubble ground. This part here would have one they call a sock on. So you put that on the front because it got broke the rest of the plough could be saved and you change the sock every year or when it got wore down. These hawthorn bushes remind me of the trees at Ingebeck. Pushed into the wind. Carl calls them pegger tree. They would in use for putting the washing on I guess. Or your pots and pans when they'd be smaller. And as we always said about all these ruins and all these old places, there was always a hawthorn tree, an arawan or an ash tree. One for drying your clothes, one for evil spirits. This has cleaned your life quite harshly. The one next to it's dead, this one here is doing its best to survive. Must have had a door in the end of the um, cow house. Must be a loft above it. It's been bricked up over the years. No sign of a thatching roof, so maybe it's a slate roof. And look what somebody's put down in the sun. Two little seats. Might have a seat there later and uh, cogitate on the day. And this little hole in the ground doesn't look very much, does it? And you wonder why I took a picture of that well. Well. I believe it would be the well. Um, so there must have been a stream coming around from the mountain. This is where they got the water from for the cow house and the house and all the other things they needed it. It's been covered over but now it's fell in. There's a plethora of buildings on this place. I hadn't looked as close the last time I was up here but there's some go over the fence. But I looked for somewhere they would have put a mill because they did have a thrashing mill here one time. They advertised with one anyway. Which would have been a big pull for anybody interested in being arable. Good picture of the uh, barn there, overlooking the sea. God, it must have been bleak in the winter time though. This is another substantial shed, barn, whatever you want to call it. So for the amount of acres it had, it did have lots of buildings. 
you can just see how it was built thick walls soil in between no soil and water it's amazing how it stayed up really what you see when you stop and look at it, it's amazing isn't it just see that beam I imagine that must have come from a boat or something so I'm guessing this probably would have been the um, fashing barn this means the actual horse walk would be in the field opposite Yes, they've used that to um, go over a hole, really. So they built up to it and they used that as a lintel. I wonder what that was for. Maybe it was a, for a cart, be a small cart. How quick nature takes over is amazing, isn't it? This hawthorn tree has decided this is the place for me. Up she pops. Astonishing how nature does manage to um, survive all adversaries. And now, uh, now it's going in to make sense. To me, it didn't have a horse walk, it had a water wheel, I think. And this would be the race. And what I thought was a well was actually just to cover the stream. So this must have had its own water wheel one time to do the thrashing with. So that farm there would be a storage rather than part of the thrashing system, unless the machinery was in there, maybe that's where it was, for the thrashing. And this is the, um, the scene that would greet you every morning when you come to milk the cows, on a nice day anyway. Straight down look of Albert Tower. Now that Jersey cow was telling you about, or Jersey cows have been tethered here by the neck for the winter months. To do with our cows. You can stand up and lie down and lie down and stand up. Some days you put them out, it was a good day. And then you feed them, milk them, and take the poo away. It's one of my jobs for the winter when I was younger. It's quite a substantial building, really. Cement floor. It's not that old. Brick works here and there. I so said the tethings thing for the sh cow makes it a cow I suppose. And this um, part here would be what's called the walk. And this part was green in the middle here, would be called the grep. So the cows would stand in a line from where that first pole is, up along that wall. Uh, maybe eight or ten cows maybe, six. And they'd be left in there to be milked and so forth. The roof reminds me of old Les D Dawson story, you know. I was lying in bed one night thinking about things and I looked up at the stars and I thought, where the hell's the roof gone? Sorry, it was a corny old joke, but it's true. Well, the roof from most of these places would have been sold because the slates were worth more than the, sh than the um, barn, so to speak. Those little holes there don't mean much to you and me, maybe, but they would have been where a stall was put. So you can imagine there'd be stalls right up through the here, and a cow in each one. Also on the wall there you can just see some holes. It would have signified a loft. Got the beams that are going to cross here and topped it up. And at the very end there you've got a wall that's blocked up a hole and they would have pitched up the sheaves or whatever it is into the hole into here for the cows for the winter time. Definitely one of the best views in the Isle of Man on any day, but especially today. Lovely view of the north. Right down into Ramsey. Stay good girl. I've jotted some notes down before they come out because I can't remember them. So I'll read them off as I come to them for you, so you get some idea of the history of this place. 1865 was known in one of the press reports I read for to be a herd of Jersey milkers up here. And uh, they were um, a good breeding cow, small, would sit up here, easy carvers and good rich milk. 1867 was bought by Gold, bought by Goldie Torben for 846 quid, it's a lot of money those days. 1869 there was mention of a threshing mill which must have been driven, I think, by that race out there. And um, 1885, 
It was advertised for sale as a small dairy farm. And um, in 1932, or well, between the wars anyway, the Galling family bought it, built the summer house. It can be for winter time or summertime went down for the winter time. It was then um, sold off uh, by the estate and bought by the, um, Mr. Walter Jackson from Park Llewellyn. He was the last official owner and uh, he used to keep Chevy sheep up here. So that's the potted history of it. And um, I'm glad I made the effort to come and see it. Especially today, anyway. It's one of the best days I've been able to come up here. I've got some photographs I'll add to it for you. Give you a bit more history on it as well. So, um, goodbye for now.